Hi, I thought I'd repeat the uh, max patch work we did this morning just to just in case you missed things or a little repetition and show you some other ways to do the same uh, to create the same patch and then also to use that patch to show you some more information uh, about sound that we're exploring in this early part of the course. So as you remember, we started with uh, the output that is the uh, digital audio converter, digi digital analog converter, um, DAC, which we created by typing N, N, and then E Z D A C tilde, audio output and on and off button, and then this um, speaker icon appears. Uh, if you happen to have forgotten that, you could also do that another way. At the top here, we see have under Add Objects, we have a, a repertoire, a menu of different types of objects. Um, among the audio objects, we see uh, a mic icon, Easy ADC. You can guess what that is: ADC, Analog Digital Converter, and. Uh, DAC, digital audio or analog, one of the two, uh, converter. So so we can just, instead of typing it in, we can just grab this icon and pull it down. Uh, another object we created was the cycle tilde, which created the um, sine wave. So uh, we talked about just typing N as a shortcut to make an object. If, if you forget that, um, you could also come up to this icon here and simply pull it down. Excuse me, did that wrong. Simply uh, pull it down into, yes, there it worked, into the field and type in it then, that way. Um, so another uh, way in which you can access objects is this menu on the left where you have all the objects listed alphabetically. If you go down you can see cycle listed among these objects. So the full list of objects is, is um, contained in this menu. Uh, so we, we created this cycle object which uh, generates the sine wave tone and then uh, we also created a um, live gain object which allowed us to control the level of this um, <clears throat> of this sine wave signal. Uh, we did that because if we didn't do that you blast your ears out just word to the wise it helps to have this gain because those signals can be very loud uh, so I pulled this down ahead of time. Remember the other object we had was a scope. And again, there's another way to get it. Uh, if we unlock the, the patch up in Add Object, among these icons we see uh, the scope. And we can just pull that down and create the, uh, the scope that, as we did. So we're ready to run the the patch now I believe. So you'll remember that in order to uh, establish uh, the frequency we needed to create uh, a box uh, that had the numbers uh, number box you could call it. Uh, and uh, so we typed I in the screen to get to get that uh, object. Another way is to come up here and simply grab this icon and, and drag it down and we've got the box the object with the numbers available. And now we can adjust the frequency. So I'll pull down the gain and we'll listen to this sound. So we've got uh, got the frequency working. 
one thing I need to, to tell you about is, uh, is kind of a, a detail with regard to uh, the scope. So um, if we, we selected the scope here, and now if we go up to this eye icon for the inspector, we have all the attributes of this object now. So there are many different aspects to this object. The one uh, operative one here is is this one here, the samples uh, buffer per sam sample. It says cow count. Uh, this is so if we select that and reduce that number, say to nine, then we find that that's the appropriate size for this frequency range. Another way to accomplish the same thing is to create uh, another number box here and to put that information into this scope like this. Um, so you notice uh, that this port says uh, INT, which means integer. So this integer is, is the box there with the numbers. Integer sets buffer per pixel. Do you see that? Uh, so that's that's telling you what that particular input does. It sets the buffer per pixel. And a figure of, say, in single digits makes for an effective image. So we've got our scope working on, and showing the, the sine waveform there. Uh, now uh, we could take a look and see what happened with the different sort of waveform. So these are a sine or a cosine wave. Um, we can also uh, ask Max to make um, a sawtooth wave, which is saw tilde. And now the sawtooth wave um, will have a different tone. And a different shape. Like a sawtooth. Okay, so uh, we'll stop now, and uh, in the next video, we'll look at we'll look at other features of the sawtooth wave and another waveform in addition. All right.